Hey everyone, this video is about the Sinclair Cambridge Programmable Calculator, which was first released in 1975. And costing only 17 British pounds at the time, it was designed to be a very inexpensive competitor to other early programmable calculators like the HP 65, which was released a year earlier. And this low price was due in part to advances in integrated circuit design. Uh, Sinclair Radionics, as Clive Sinclair's company uh, was called at the time, had produced a number of previous calculators. Uh, it started with the Sinclair Executive uh, in 1972, which cost £80 and contained about 90 electronic components. But as we'll see, the Cambridge program will manage to support a lot more capability with only two integrated circuits and a capacitor. But of course that cheap price also came with compromises, most notably its build quality and its calculation accuracy. Now some of its scientific functions only yield four significant digits, but it was an amazing and ingenious device for the price at the time. And the Cambridge program will supports 36 program steps and came with a program library consisting of four books. It was sold in the US as the Radio Shack EC4001 originally for $35. And so physically the most remarkable thing about the Cambridge program bill is just how small it is and I've put it alongside some other calculators that you might be familiar with and uh, it's only 11 by 5 centimetres and 2.5 centimetres deep and it weighs 90 grams and you can fairly comfortably use it with one hand just like a TV remote control. Uh, the calculator has an 8-digit red LED display made by a national semiconductor uh, and there's a physical on-off switch. And uh, the keys are fairly nice to use, uh, surprisingly. They've got a little bit of a click to them. Uh, and if we flip it over, uh, we can see um, the battery compartment door which protrudes from the case. And uh, the door is quite flimsy. Uh, so you can just pull it off to reveal the 9 volt battery uh, inside. And so you can just pull the calculator apart and uh, this is what it looks like inside. And so like I was saying, there are only uh, two ICs and a capacitor. And uh, the processor is the National Semiconductor MM5799N, uh, which is a 4-bit microcontroller, and I presume it uses an algorithm like Cordic uh, to do its scientific operations. And the Cambridge program ball is an algebraic calculator, and this differed from other Sinclair models like Scientific, which was uh, RPN, but of course it didn't support operator precedence, so uh, if I enter 2 plus 3... Uh, times 4 and then equals uh, we get 20. Uh, the first pocket algebraic calculator to support operator precedence, uh, which would have been an answer of 14, was the Casio FX39 uh, from 1978, which I have another video on. Uh, and the, the keyboard has uh, only 19 keys, but many of these are overridden with one or two functions. And uh, so the calculator can display numbers in floating point or scientific notation. And by default, it will uh, display results from 0 0.001 up to 100 million in floating points. And the top two keys on the left uh, require some explanation. Uh, so the top left exponent key uh, switches between decimal point exponent entry and change of sign of an exponent. Uh, so say we wanted to enter uh, 1.5, uh, we would type 1 uh, and then hit uh, the exponent key and then uh, hit 5. Uh, but uh, if we hit the exponent key again, uh, we can enter uh, an exponent. Uh, and hitting it again uh, changes the sign of the exponent, and yes, this takes some getting used to. Uh, and the shift key uh, to its right uh, switches between so-called uppercase uh, or F functions, uh, which are indicated above the key being modified, and a lowercase or G functions indicated below them. Uh, so say for uh, the 7 key, the uppercase function is sign and the lowercase uh, g function is arc sign. Uh, 
uh, and these operate in radians. So let's take the sine of one radian. So uh, I'll enter one uh, and then hit uh, shift once and then hit sine. Uh, and then um, we can hit uh, shift shift and then seven uh, to do the arc sign. Uh, and like I was saying, trigonometric operations are only accurate to four decimal places, so uh, we're quite a ways out from one. Uh, and we even need to use the shift key twice to enter negative numbers. So to say to enter negative three, uh, we would key in the number uh, three and then shift, shift, and then uh, the zero key. And another useful operation is shift 3, uh, which switches between a floating point and uh, exponential. And you can also uh, use shift 6 uh, to enter open and close parentheses. So to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4, uh, where the 3 times 4 is in brackets, uh, we go clear and then we would go uh, 2 plus, and then uh, shift 6, and then 3 times 4, and then shift 6. And if that isn't confusing enough, uh, each of the operator keys has an alternative uh, convenience function uh, written in uh, yellow uh, below the key. Uh, but you don't use the shift key to access that. Instead, you, you follow that operator uh, by any other operator key or the equals key. And the function is executed uh, on the whole expression. Uh, so say if we uh, enter 1 uh, plus 1 and then uh, multiply, multiply, uh, that uh, will square... Uh, the sum of 1 plus 1 uh, to give 4. Uh, and the other convenience functions are uh, 1 over x uh, minus x and uh, 2 times x. And again, this overloading of keys uh, might be convenient, but it is also uh, super confusing. And the last basic operation I'll cover um, are the memory operations. So uh, Shift 2 writes the currently displayed number uh, into the single uh, memory register. Uh, so let's move 4 uh, into the memory register. So Shift 2. Uh, and then uh, Shift 5 will recall it. Uh, shift Shift 5 uh, switches uh, the displayed number and the number from the memory register. And the Cambridge program both supports a keystroke programming model and supports up to 32 uh, steps. And again, there are quite a number of quirks to remember while programming. Uh, the three main things are, firstly, when the calculator is in learn mode uh, and is recording keystrokes, uh, its default is uh, to use the uppercase shift version of um, each key. And so uh, if you wanted to enter, say, a numeric constant, uh, one of the numbers on the keypad, uh, you actually have to um, proceed that uh, with the three key. Uh, also, if you want to use the lowercase shifted version of a key, uh, you need to proceed it uh, with the decimal point. A uh, second thing to remember is that a program won't terminate or display an output unless an explicit stop instruction is added. And if you forget a stop instruction, the calculator will just loop indefinitely. Uh, and the third thing to remember is that the calculator won't uh, fill the steps in memory after the program you've entered. So you either need to make up the total steps uh, to 36 by repeatedly entering the equals key, or you can insert a go to zero zero instruction. And so most programs uh, will finish with a stop instruction and a go to zero zero. Okay, so I'll just demo a really simple program, my usual uh, full distance example. So uh, this is the distance an object falls under gravity in time t, which is uh, t squared times 4.9. Uh, and so to enter this, uh, we will uh, first make sure we are at uh, line number 00. 
uh, and then we will uh, turn on learn mode. Uh, and so we'll assume the user has entered time t, and uh, to square it, we'll use the convenience function on the multiply key uh, by tapping uh, multiply and then equals. Uh, and then we'll hit the multiply key again uh, to actually multiply. Uh, and we want to multiply by uh, 4.8, um, but I'm not sure we can actually enter a decimal point in a program. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll multiply it by 48 and then divide by 10. Uh, and so we want to multiply by a constant, so we need to start um, by the number 3. Uh, and then we'll enter 48, and then divide by, and then 3, and then 10. Uh, and then we'll hit equals. Uh, and again, now we'll want to uh, stop the program. Uh, and we want to go to uh, zero, 0, Uh So we need to hit the shift key, go to zero, 0, Uh And now we can exit learn mode uh, by enter entering clear. And now before we run the program, uh, we should set the program counter uh, to 0 again. So go to zero, 0, And... Um, now to run the program, uh, we can enter an argument. So let's say one second, and then we can run, or uh, say five seconds, an object falls 120 meters. And the calculator supports a conditional go to if negative um, instruction. And you can also use the stop instruction uh, to prompt for multiple inputs. And the calculator comes with a four volume book of programs across finance, statistics, maths, and engineering uh, of almost 400 pages. And I'll link it uh, to it in the video description. And I'm sure if you uh, check it out, you'll be quite amazed uh, what you can do in 36 instructions, for example, there's a, even a Fourier analysis program. And so the Cambridge program was really a remarkable and ingenious device that sold well, um, but from the mid-1970s, Sinclair's profits began to slump as electronic components became cheaper and more companies entered the calculator market. Uh, by 1976, Sinclair Radionics uh, were actually making a loss despite a large turnover, and Clive Sinclair created a new company called Sinclair Instruments, whose first product was uh, the Sinclair Wrist Calculator. Uh, later in 1977, Sinclair Instruments began working on microprocessors and uh, released the Z8, uh, ZX80 in 1980 and the ZX81 in 81. And so the history of Clive Sinclair's companies is quite interesting and the evolution from making calculators uh, to making personal computer, computers uh, paralleled other companies like Commodore and HP. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.